So this is today's the day we work on our little it's a Power Boss SW75 HD. It's around our mid 80s model. I think this is 1987 right there, but I think I put that sticker on there. So I did a little bit of research to find out what year it was made and it's probably the most proximate year would be 87, mid 80s, like, you know. Uh, it's got the drive wheel back here. That's so high. On the other side is a big hydraulic motor. It's pretty worn out. I think it's got lots of hours on this machine. Uh, we burst a hose on it. And uh, it's down in here. The hoses are all very hard to access. Uh, the, uh, this is an older model and the motor is mounted right behind the, the sweep, right above the main broom, which is behind this door. If you unbolt that, unbolt this nut. And get in there and see where the main broom is. There's the hydraulic motor that powers it, and it's pretty worn down. I got an extra one, and the rubber's coming off there. So it was parked underneath the tree, and the leaves swirled around and filled the trailer up. The uh, these wheels here are just it's jacked up right now. They're just like trailer wheels. There's no, they don't drive, but. All the weight comes down on these wheels here. It's a bad, that's why it's a bad design. The newer models have the motor right where the battery is back here. So all your weight's right over your drive wheel. And that wheel also steers. So, I mean, you'll see it spin there. It turns like on a dime. This thing will go right into a corner and uh, it'll do everything about, about maybe two feet from a corner, a 90 degree corner. So you get in there with a little push broom and a shovel and you clean up the little corners, but uh, it's amazing. The side broom right here up front, that's the hose we gotta change, it's running down to this. It looks like this hose is ready to be changed too. Should have had them, should have checked that a little better. This one's easy to get at. Up front is the hopper here, The uh, I call it the hopper junk gets put swept into there's the main broom back there you can see it so it just flings everything forward and fills this up right now it's completely full and then underneath this, underneath this door back here see the little latch it's kind of jammed right now there's two big filters which filter the air and uh, works pretty good Here's access again to the uh, the broom on this side. You got to unbolt it to change it, and it slides right out. Uh, there's the vacuum. Sucks up the. Okay. So there's the vacuum. This is the cooling. Uh, I have a little fan here. I mounted that myself. There's two computer fans that just run on 12 volts. And they cool the hydraulic oil. That's I think the return line to the tank. Uh, there's a filter back here. There's the tank. It's probably about three gallon, four gallon tank. And it's carbureted, 1.1 liter Nissan motor. Carburetor's terrible on it. If I could find a new one, I would put it on. <clears throat> well, this is a high dump. These cylinders here lift that, this box right up and it can dump into a container about four and a half, five feet high. Or a box of a truck or, uh, there's the motor, four cylinder, liquid cooled. Gas, a little uh, GM AC Delco alternator, <laughs> electric. Uh, I put a, we put an electric uh, fuel pump on over there. It originally had a, a mechanical pump. No, it's right there. That's the original one that was put on. That's, I think that's some sort of pressure regulator. So there's the pump right there. Um, you just turn the switch on, the pump runs, and then we get and we fire it up. Really good air filter. I think what uh, we rebuilt this motor about 10 years ago, and uh, the reason why it had to be rebuilt was it was sucking dirt and it was cracks all over from the the main filter housing here to the carburetor, and I re kind of fixed everything. There's a tons of stuff to fix on here. A lot of people can't fix a thing, so we we rebuilt everything on this. Put all new hoses, and uh, we put a new rod in it. Even this rod's damage it had an electric fan on here and it kind of it was vibrating around and ripped a hole in here so I'm gonna pull that rod out and bring it to a rod shop I'm hoping they can solder these ends shut just 
cut this end. I've seen that done and cut the other end and solder it shut. I'm not that great at soldering, so I'd rather just pay someone to get it done. Um, there's the drive wheel from this side. It's got a huge hydraulic motor there. You can kind of see it. I welded that U-bolt on there. This thing gets stuck just looking at it. So That bolt you see, that's just to hook a chain and pull it out when it gets stuck. There's almost nowhere to tie onto this machine. If you drive off pavement anywhere, crushed on anywhere, you'll get stuck for sure. Because of the uh, design of it, the motor's over the, the two idling wheels here. In the newer models, the motor's back here. So, you know, a good part of your weight is sitting on the back drive wheel. So when you flip this down, the driver sits right on this little box here. There's, there's the seat, not too luxurious, but it works. And there's the steering wheel. And there's all the controls. Uh, this machine um, does what we used to take three guys three days. It does it with one guy in one day. So it's more than paid for itself. And we used to have many, many. We used to have a lot more sites than we have right now. And we used to, this thing used to go out, and in about four or five days, we'd have a bunch of sites done. And uh, before that, it was costing a fortune. So, uh, and the next time you see it, it might be out sweeping, or I might give you an update as I get the rad fixed. So, we'll see what happens. Okay, a couple more things. I got the side broom. I can't find the one that's supposed to fit on that machine, so what I do is I just drill three holes that match my mounting plate. There's a, probably a better system out there that mounts to these. You just click it in and probably pops in. But I don't have that because it's so old. So it's easy three, uh, I think three five sixteenths or three eighths bolts, and then the main broom, it fits. It's made to fit. So the drive mechanism has two grooves to fit in here, and then as she wears down, I think right now we're about uh, halfway. So I'll keep this with me when I'm sweeping, and if it gets to the point where it's not working anymore, we just we just uh, pull the old broom off, put this one on. It's you know what it is is a big piece of PVC pipe with this uh, piece on the end, and all the bristles. There's holes drilled, and they're they're glued in there. Somehow I don't know how they make them, but and then we got this old style broom. Uh, when you're storing one of these, make sure you keep it upright like that. Don't ever store it like, like this because what will happen is over time your blades will bend. They'll bend right over like that, and then they won't work so great. So, little tip of the day. So back there, you can see that aluminum uh, knurled knob right there. That's a there's a bar that dro goes down. It drops down to uh, adjust the height of your main broom. As it wears, you got to keep uh, loosening that up so that the broom will lower to a point where it will touch the, the pavement. So I, I think we adjust that maybe once or twice a year make an adjustment on that but and I'm sure there's other things I should show you but uh, uh, this thing is uh, really tiny it fits right in our trailer it's hard to load it's very heavy because it doesn't have pneumatic tires I had to mount steel plates on here on the trailer uh, ramp and this is the only trailer we can put it in anything with a higher uh, lift than that it won't go in so so one thing I really don't like about it. If I were going to shop for another one, I would be looking for one with pneumatic tires. Uh, because then, you you know, as your tires wear down, you just change them. I, I priced out these wheels. And I think they want... Uh, I think you buy just the rubber with the steel. And then you, 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 you to remove the old one, you just cut right through that. Cut the steel, it pops off. And then the new one, I think you put it in an oven or you put it out in the heat and you put dry ice on this thing and they just drop them together and they're, that's it. But they want like 500 bucks for two wheels for this. So I said, nah, I don't think so. I'll just keep going with what I got. And the main, the back main drive wheel, I don't even know if I can get one of them because it's so old, this thing. So that's one of the downfalls with this, but it's it served us really well. It's uh, cheap to run. Got a little five gallon gas tank underneath there somewhere. And uh, it runs, maybe it'll burn $25 worth of fuel or 50 bucks worth of fuel for a season. So I use it, I try and use it in the spring. Well, I definitely, I use it in the spring and then I try and go around in the, in 
the summer and clean up a little bit.